The return of Linkin Park was built up perfectly with a curious countdown, then a count up, then an underground fan attended live concert to debut the new singer Emily Armstrong along with the new song The Emptiness Machine, a new album announcement in From Zero coming this November, and a new world tour in 2024. Linkin Park is back and we can all be happy. So, turns out Emily Armstrong is, or at least has been, deep with Scientology, which is confirmed by photos, her appearances, and who she has associated with in the past. It's messy, and we once again cannot have nice things. I want to start off with giving my experience to the live show. My wife and I, concert photographers, we were on our way to shoot Power Wolf Live, and on the way up was when the live stream started. We heard Linkin Park open with a new song, heard Emily's voice, and we both thought it worked. Then we heard her cover older Linkin Park songs, and for the most part, it worked well. Sounded solid, no complaints. I even put a poll in the community tab last night. A lot of feedback and mostly positive support. I mean, this should be cause for celebration, right? I saw the announcement of the new album from Zero and six dates worldwide that actually go around the world. It felt like Linkin Park was back. It was at the concert between sets that my wife showed me some comments online, and then more people started referencing articles and photos that led to today's discourse. Not even 24 hours of excitement on this one. I'm not going to get into the huge argument of excitement over backlash on Linkin Park having a new singer. My podcast host and I have discussed that at length. The topic today is who Linkin Park has chosen regardless of her talent. Again, I thought she sounded fine. What does not sound fine is that she was and possibly still is deep into Scientology. Not only are there many photos floating around of Armstrong at Scientology events, but Cedric Bixler Zavala of the Mars Volta and at the drive-in, who with his wife helped open up the evils of Scientology and put Danny Masterson in jail, has come out swinging about Emily Armstrong and her... the uh, past. Whether she was born into Scientology or not is one thing, but it was confirmed that she was a supporter of criminal Danny Masterson, who did unspeakable things to women for years, and the Church of Scientology helped support and keep his behavior down for years until it was all made public. So much of a supporter that she apparently showed up in his SA trial just in support. She wasn't testifying or anything, but just there for him to support Masterson in his SA trial. All of this sounds like a nightmare. I'm not saying I know the full story or her current stance on Scientology, and I'm not saying she couldn't have had a comeback to reality moment since the last year or so, but it begs the question, did Linkin Park know about all this? And if so, were they okay with all this? I mean, Linkin Park had the best return campaign I think I've ever seen. They all kept this down without leaks. They had interviews and music videos ready to go for September 5th. The interview with Apple TV is fun. The tour, the new album, and live stream performance, this is how you make a comeback. Which means they had to have known who they wanted to be in the band, right? There's no way Mike Shinoda, Mr. Han, everyone wouldn't have known about all this with Emily Armstrong in her past, right? Even so, the label probably would have done some digging to make sure Emily Armstrong as the new singer would not have caused any issues, right? Either none of the previous mentioned parties knew, or they knew and are intentionally trying to keep it down because she wants to keep it down and she's afraid of Scientology retaliation, or they knew and just didn't care. And that last one is really bad if that's the case. I hope it's not true. And we know she has ties to Scientology no matter what. Whether she's born into the church or not, her standing next to Cedric at a Scientology gala years ago proves quite a bit. Speaking of Cedric, it was yesterday that he made a statement about Linkin Park choosing Armstrong. It's since been removed, but here's the quote. Remember when we did the purification rundown, Emily, because of what my wife knew? Why can't you shut your mouth during the detox program where people are going through some rough stuff because you're singing like an unsuitable supervised child? Is it because you're born into Scientology that gets a pass? How do you reconcile the homophobia found in the teachings of RLH's book Dianetics? Do your fans know about your friend Danny Masterson? This is just some of the stuff he said, and it's literally Cedric recapping his own personal experience with detoxing and everything within Scientology with Emily Armstrong and accusing Emily and the Scientologists of all the things that happened that were confirmed to have happened. As of recording this, it has not even been 24 hours since the live stream, and we are already in the thick of what could be a PR nightmare at best, and another nightmare chapter for Linkin Park at worst. Again, the comeback campaign and how it was run was all done so well. The hype was gargantuan, and there was a little beam of sunshine coming from Linkin Park as we have heard the live performances from our favorite Linkin Park songs. Here's one crucial point I want to bring up. Let's say she's been trying to distance herself from Scientology and wanted to get out of it for a while. Armstrong would have had to keep that quiet because Scientology has a history of going after people from stalking them to 
much worse than stalking. If she was born into Scientology, that means her family is involved with it also, and it could mean her family could be in trouble. See how messy this all is? And if that's the case, then I can understand why Linkin Park would not want to address any of this for Emily's safety. Maybe she's trying to get out of Scientology and she had that come to reality moment, but she can't go public with it for fear of her or her family's safety. Or she's still in the church and we don't know. We're kind of grasping at straws, but this is a big situation. And Emily Armstrong is now at the focal point of the world of music right now. It's not something she's going to be able to just ignore. This video is not meant to downplay or discredit Armstrong as a singer or Linkin Park's choice to add her as a vocalist. I thought she sounded fine. I can see this working. I am excited for a new album. But now with all this being exposed, I'm not sure how I feel completely. It's a lot to take in. And I do truly hope that we get a statement of some kind from Armstrong because this is undeniably going to stay in the public eye going forward. This is intentionally a brief video and I leave the comment section open for all of you. What do you think of the new Linkin Park, the new song, the new upcoming album, Emily Armstrong as a singer, and do you think Linkin Park's gonna respond to all this? We're all still getting information on this as I record and edit, but it's been a wild 24 hours. All I wanted to do was listen to Linkin Park on the way to a Powerwolf concert. By the way, the Powerwolf concert was as amazing as I'd hoped. They are so great. Check out Powerwolf's latest album, Wake Up the Wicked. It's a blast.